One of the readings recently was Jesus healing the man who was sitting at the waters of Bethsaida. And I just was thinking about this man that was sitting there for years and he's on this mat and he has no control. And all of a sudden Jesus walks up to him and he says, do you want to get well? And he's like, yes, sir, I, I do. But every time the water stirs up, someone else gets it before me because I can't walk. And Jesus said, rise and be healed. We've heard that story a million times. And I was thinking that day, you know how you do it when you hear the priest talking about it and then you start pondering things. It's like that man woke up that morning like any other day. I don't know if someone carried him there and set him there. I don't know what his routine was. Did he wake up, brush his teeth, go brush his hair, sit there and pray? Um, but he'd done it, you know, 40, 50 years, 20, 30. I don't know how old he was, but for many, many years, every day was the same. Every day he was crippled. Every day he sat there. And little did he realize that day, that day, with no sign, no precursor, no, uh oh, I'm starting to feel better. I think this might be the day. Just another day like all the rest. And little did he realize when he went there that morning that that night he would go home healed. I mean, I can't even comprehend. Do you ever think about that when you're looking at these Bible stories? Like, he must be like, oh my gosh, my legs, my legs are probably bouncing, like, <gasps> jumping and, 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 and so excited. I don't even know if it was days or weeks or months where he would still look down and see his feet and go, oh, am I really walking? Am I really walking? I lived in Italy before. Um, we lived on the island of La Maddalena. It's actually for St. Mary Magdalene. And for those of you that are curious, go right now, Google images of La Maddalena, Italy. Paradise. And every single day for the two years that I lived there, I literally woke up with the windows and I was like, do I really live here? Oh my gosh. And then the next day again, I'd look it up. And I was like, how do I get to live here? So for me, that whole two years, I never got sick of it. All right, so I've kind of built up this story of what it must have been like for that man. How often did he pray? They didn't have God, or they had God, but they had no Savior yet back then. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. They didn't have these prayers of healing. You know, they had healers that would come by. They had Moses and the prophets. But I'm sure the idea of just pray and God will give you a miracle, I don't think that crossed his mind, except for getting into the waters, which he never got into. And what I'm talking about is a suddenly, suddenlies. How many times have you looked at the state of your life and, and you look at a sick family member and you think this is the way it's going to be forever, or you look at a broken marriage, you look at a divorced marriage, your spouse has been gone for years perhaps even in a new fake remarriage. And you think you have to see signs first. I have a family member, I'm waiting for that person to be reconciled because God did tell me they would reconcile. And, and I'll have other family members say to me, so any signs, seeing any change, what's going on? And I'm like, no, 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 no. This one got remarried to another woman and this one's doing this. And they're like, doesn't even look like it's going to happen. I said, it doesn't matter. I think of Bob and Charlene Steinkamp. If you're not familiar with their story, go to Rejoice Marriage Ministries. Charlene and Bob were legally divorced, and Bob was in an engagement. And this was back in 1987, and she had been praying for their reconciliation. She had been praying, and God had told her, they, you will reconcile. And it was actually, so no text messages, no emails, no, I'm, tell, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. She was praying for him daily. And he one day was so oppressed by the Holy Spirit that he drove four hours north, knocked on her window at work, and basically went and took her out to lunch so that he could tell her, stop praying for me. And now, first of all, I'm like, you didn't even have email or text or daily phone calls. How did he know you were praying? He knew. He knew because the Holy Spirit would not let you forget. So your prayers do work. But he took her out to lunch and he said, look, let's, let's just 
um, you've got to stop praying for me. I'm engaged. I'm getting married to the other woman. Well, Charlene kept saying, well, I, I will wait for you, but I will never stop praying for you. And he said, how about if we go and get a marriage license, since you seem to think we're going to get married one day. Let's get a marriage license now, put it in your Bible, put it in the pages, and maybe one day you'll get to use that marriage license. Of course, she's no idiot, so she's like, okay, sure, but I won't stop praying for you, right? So they went down to the city hall, got the marriage license, and as they were driving home from getting the marriage license, she was praying the whole time. They drove past her preacher's place, they were Protestants, and um, they went in and talked to the preacher and something, I can't remember the story completely, but at some point the Holy Spirit had said to Bob, you're making the biggest mistake of your life, referring to the other woman. And so when they went to see the preacher, and the preacher, of course there's more details in there, and they were talking, and he knew that they had picked up a marriage license, and the preacher said to Bob and Charlene, well, what's to stop you guys from getting married right now? And Bob said, okay. <laughs> I mean, isn't this crazy? They, he drove four hours north to tell her to stop praying for him. And he went home married. Went home to Charlene's home. And he actually sat on her bed and had to call the other woman and said, I remarried my ex-wife. And the other woman said, I knew that would happen. That is one of the craziest stories I've ever heard. Charlene is someone I, I know. She has been on, uh, been with my group meeting. She's talked to my people. She shared her story. She shares it all over the internet with Rejoice Marriage Ministries that she and Bob then formed after the this remarriage. And it's around hundreds of countries. I can't remember. Travels, uh, the, the, this podcast get out everywhere. And they have lots and lots and lots and lots of people all the time posting their success stories while their marriages were reconciled. Now again, you guys know I'm talking a lot about marriage, but this isn't just about marriage. This is you knowing that God's healing does not have to take a long time. You do not have to see signs. It can happen in a minute. All you need is to keep believing. All you need is to keep having faith. All you need is to just go, okay, God, I am your handmaid, whatever you want. But I'm going to keep praying for this healing, whether it's the healing of a marriage, healing of my health, healing of a child. And who knows? Today may be your day. This video may be your sign. So just keep on believing in the power of God and in what He can do, because He can and He does in this day and age. He still does. I'd be curious to hear the miracles that God has wrought in your life. Post it in the comments. What were things that you never saw happening that all of a sudden you're like, wow, oh my gosh, that was a miracle. Because miracles do still happen and they will continue to happen until the end of time. I'm Dr. Christine Bacon. Thanks for watching another informational bacon bit and remember to live your life. Oh, look at the sun, sunny side up.